So tonight I want to compare the Seastar S50 to my cooled astro camera as well as my Canon 6D DSLR. And this is a basic unmodified DSLR camera that's quite popular for astronomy and it is a full frame camera. Whereas my APS-C camera, that's the ASI 2600MC Duo, that's also a very popular uh, cooled camera for astrophotography and both the DSLR and the cooled camera are going to be tested with the Ascar FRA 300 which is a 60 millimeter quintuplet APO refractor and the refractor also has a focal ratio of f5 just like the C star so this will be a good comparison and the targets I'm going to be testing on tonight are Messier 13 the Hercules cluster and that's a good target because it is fairly small and fairly bright and it's a broadband object so I can test both on cooled DSLR the Astro camera as well as the C star on that and then I will also be testing all three of these on the Veil Nebula and for that I'll be using the built-in dual band filter in the C star and I'll be using an IDAS NBZ2 filter on both the cooled Astro camera as well as the unmodified Canon 6D DSLR camera and the Veil Nebula is, is quite large the entire veil doesn't fit in the field of view whereas with the cooled Astro camera as well as the full frame DSLR I should be able to capture the entire Veil Nebula complex so this will be a good demonstration of the difference in the field of view so let's see what we can get tonight. The sky is looking pretty clear now over most of the sky and there is the constellation of Cygnus. We are first going to get some data from the refractor with the cooled astro camera. And in the meantime, I've got the ZWC star right over here set up. Okay, I've transferred everything to the computer. And let's take a look and see what we've got. I've rotated both the Canon 6D and the cooled astro camera image uh, counterclockwise to make them look vertical, uh, just like the C star, so it'll be easier to compare. So at the very left we have the C-star image, in the middle we have the Canon 6D image and on the right we have the APS-C camera, the ASI 2600MC Duo. And right away you can see that the Messier 13 looks much larger in the C-star image. But if I zoom out you can see that, uh, that the field of view is fairly small, which is why it looks larger. Um, and the Canon 6D and the cooled astro camera image, you can see that there is a, a lot of empty space around the main target. If we zoom in on the center in each of the other two images as well, we can do a better job of comparing them. Now the sea star image again looks very good and we can see quite a few faint stars in the outer periphery of the cluster and so this is uh, 23 minutes of exposure time on each of these setups. Now compared to the sea star image we can see that the Canon 6D image looks smaller and that's because the Canon 6D has much larger 6.54 micron pixels instead of the 2.9 micron pixels on the sea star and in the sea star image on the left you can see this tiny little magnitude 15 galaxy I'll uh, zoom into it a bit more this little fuzzy patch zoom back to hundred percent and in the Canon image the galaxy is here it, it's still there this little fuzzy patch but it is a little bit harder to see because it's uh, smaller there now looking at the cooled astro camera image the galaxy is over here fairly easy to see but pretty small because it is a magnitude 15 galaxy but looking at the cluster itself we can see more stars in that image and the stars are sharper and smaller than uh, either the Canon 6D image or the C star image. So if I had to rate these I would say the ASI 2600 MC image uh, is the best you can see uh, the most stars in the outer regions of the cluster as well uh, the stars are a lot smaller. Uh, second I would say the C star shows the second highest number of stars overall and the stars look pretty good and you can see a good amount of detail in the outer regions of the cluster and last place for me would be the Canon 6D image even though the large pixels are pretty good they are better matched for a scope with a long focal length instead of a 300 millimeter focal length uh, refractor. Okay so now we can flip through all three of these images and this is at 100% zoom. C star, cooled camera, DSLR. C star, cooled camera, DSLR. Now let's uh, do a different kind of comparison. This time we'll open them up 
with the drizzle option enabled. So since I got a fairly large number of sub exposures, I also used drizzle integration. So when combining the images, that'll give me some extra resolution because Messier 13 is a fairly small target. So once again, uh, the very left is the C-Star image, in the middle is the Canon 6D image, and on the very right is the ASI 2600MC cooled camera image. So I'm going to zoom in to 100%, and you can see it created a much larger image with the drizzle integration. And the middle image, the Canon 6D, we zoomed that into 100%. It looks like uh, that did somewhat benefit as well. So uh, at 100% magnification, the C-Star image still looks great, seems to have benefited uh, quite a bit from the drizzle integration. And you can see a lot of detail. And the little galaxy is up here. That's the magnitude 15 galaxy, so it's just visible. Looking at the Canon 6D image in the middle, the cluster is uh, not quite as detailed as it is in the C-Star image. And finally, at the very right, the cooled astro camera, uh, you can see a lot more faint stars in the outer regions of the cluster. And again, that looks, looks uh, quite a bit better. So we've got the C-Star, Canon 6D, cooled camera, C-Star, Canon 6D cooled camera. I mean, the C-Star did really hold its own against the other competitors. And again, these images are completely raw, just simply calibrated and stacked. So these images have not been processed at all. Now, using something like Blur Exterminator, I'm sure you can get better results, uh, but uh, not everyone has Blur Exterminator, which is why I didn't uh, factor that in. But if we apply a little bit of Blur Exterminator just to see how it cleans up the stars, so that definitely improved things for the C-Star. Let's just apply the Blur Exterminator to all three of the images. Definitely improved things, but I think that might still be a little bit heavy-handed. I don't like to over-process anything, so if I was actually processing them, I would probably drop uh, Sharpen Stars to maybe 0.1 or even lower. Okay, so the image with the cooled Astro camera didn't improve that much because it was pretty good to start with. It was already quite sharp. Now let's compare all of these. So we've got the C-Star, Canon 6D, and the cooled Astro camera. When you actually display the images, you won't be displaying them like that. It would be more something like this maybe. So the difference might not be quite as great at that point. So if I stretch them, yeah, as you can see, they are looking a little bit closer now overall uh, than they appear when they're fully auto-stretched. And uh, let's, let's do the same thing to the Canon one as well. And as you can see, also looks pretty nice. However, it's still, it uh, still doesn't have as much detail in the actual cluster uh, compared to the C-Star and the cooled Astro camera. So let's pull up our second target now. This is the Veil Nebula. Okay, now we can do a better comparison. So this is an interesting target because it is so much larger than the other targets and this uh, highlights uh, one of the main weaknesses of the C-Star, which is that it has a pretty small sensor. So even though it captures a good amount of detail, it can't take in you know massive vistas like uh, like the DSLR or the APS-C cooled astro camera can. So let's see how it compares on this target. And for this target, I was using the built-in nebula filter, the dual band filter on the C-Star. And on both the Canon 6D and the cooled Astro camera, I was using an IDAS NBZ2 dual band filter. It's very similar to the Nebula filter in the C-Star. However, it is narrower, so it lets in less light pollution. So comparing all three of these images at 100% zoom, we can see that the C-Star does have a significantly larger image scale than the Canon 6D, even though it doesn't have its field of view. And I think the Canon 6D was hamstrung a little bit uh, by the fact that I was using a dual band filter on an unmodified camera and it wasn't letting in a ton of the H-alpha light uh, compared to the other two setups. Now looking at the last image, which is the cooled astro camera, uh, that's definitely the best so far. The colors are very nice. The detail is very, very nice. The stars look great and very sharp. And if I was displaying these images at their regular brightness, uh, we can use screen transfer function to kind of simulate that. The $3,000 setup um, does look better, but 
it's not that far off from the sea star except the fact that, that it is able to capture the entire veil nebula in one go let me know in the comments below if you found this comparison helpful if you are trying to upgrade from an old dslr camera and you might be wondering whether to go for a cooled astro camera or a smart telescope like the sea star hopefully you found this review helpful and if there are any other topics that you want me to cover on this channel or any other comparisons that you want me to do i just post it in the comments below and i will do my best to, to get that done thanks again for watching and clear skies